uh, as I came in, coach coach left to go coach a college team, uh, Skidmore College, and then a new coach coach came in. So it was definitely different. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people experience it, but it's one coach has a vision. They bring in that type of guys, and then a new coach comes in, and it's like all baffled. So definitely different. But uh, coach I had there, Rob Ferraris, unbelievable guy. He came from Mercyhurst. Uh, great coach, great guy. Uh, I have no complaints about him. Knows the game of hockey very well and has a lot of connections. So sweet. And before that, did you play? What did you uh, play? I played uh, for the Buffalo Eagles uh, for Coach uh, Matt Barnaby. Unbelievable, unbelievable guy. He's a great. He's a great guy. Definitely a character for sure, but uh, one of my favorite coaches I've ever played for. Genuine guy, always had our backs and definitely had to push us when he needed to. So he's a great guy. And so um, the prep school routine, it's its pretty brutal when you're doing it. Um, yep. How did your, how did uh, an every day go for you out there? So Wednesdays and Saturdays were game days. So we, had half a day of school Wednesday and Saturday. So we had school on Saturday. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, full day of class. And then my school, you had to play three sports all three seasons. So you had to play a sport each season. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, you were practicing, going to school from 8.30 to 3. And then go right to practice. And then you had to fit a lift in there and to start the day, was it 7.30? We had chapel every morning. Did like morning announcements and then a couple uh, hymns and stuff like that. But uh, it was like a good 30 minute get together with the whole class and get the days going. And it's definitely uh, very structured, but it was uh, definitely a great experience for sure. Yeah. Um... I feel like for me, when I went to prep school, it was almost harder than college. Was, yeah, it is. Yeah. And so That's college it was kind of just, you know, it was, it was more easier for me. And, um, I feel like, I feel like what they mean by it is just handling all your free time, but that definitely comes the more you age. It's just kind of getting that time management mentality down in you while you're young. And it's just like, once you have that down, everything else is pretty much easy. That's, that's why a lot of people I know that went to prep school, they go to college and they find it way easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so after uh, Trinity Pauling, um, you went and played junior hockey, correct? Yes. Uh, the first year... First year junior hockeys, I didn't play. I actually uh, had some uh, heart issues. I had a pacemaker put in my first year juniors. I couldn't play that year. Um, unexpected, but uh, it was definitely good to take a year off. And I didn't even go, didn't do any class, nothing. I just focused on my health, kind of took a step back, relaxed. It made me kind of find the reason why I played hockey in the first place again, I kind of lost my way a little bit in prep school. I was always super strict on myself and always demanding. And I just needed to kind of take a step back. And ever since that, um, that surgery, I kind of changed my whole mentality because I mean, I, I flatlined for over a minute. So I, I die. I was clinically dead. And then it's like, holy shit, I was 17. Like, you could die. Life's too short. So I, my whole mentality changed. And it was like, just go out there and have fun. Play the game you love. Do what you would love to do. Just who cares if anything, hap anything comes out of hockey? Cool. So be it. But if not, enjoy it while you still have it. And then I came back and wanted to stay close to home. So I played uh, in the NCDC for Rochester when they still were a team and um, I just went out there, had fun, did my thing. And then uh, coach Tolan came out of nowhere and we just started talking. And just from hearing him on the phone, I'm like, this guy's 
fucking awesome. So I definitely wanted to go out to out to school out in Boston. Even if I didn't play hockey, I'd still go out play, not play, but go out to school in Boston. I love the area. Um, I just loved it ever since I would do tournaments out there, like the Foxborough tournaments or Hockey Night in Boston, whatever it was. It just, I just love the area. I don't know. I always loved going out there. Yeah, it's a great place. Well, wow, that's that's crazy that uh, that happened to you. Puts a lot of grit, you know. Um, a lot of grit you must have. You, you seem like a strong man, and uh, that's that's awesome that you came out of it and like you got that story for the rest of your life. Yeah, I just I tell everybody I'm thankful for it. Um, definitely changed my whole perspective on the way I look at things, and I couldn't be more thankful for it. I mean, I don't know just having more fun in my life now and I'm happier. So it's definitely uh, a blessing in disguise. Mm. You know, some, some people would look at that, you know, horrible. They'd be like, Oh, this is the worst thing. But, you know, it seems like you, you know, had a, uh, had a tough moment, you know, push you to be a better person, you know, and and, uh, be stronger. Yeah. You could either pout and sit back and do nothing or you can uh, look past it and, see how you can become better out of it, you know? Yeah. Um, so when you committed, um, how did that go? Were you looking for a college? Like how, how did that whole thing unfold? So um, I think I was talking for Co- with uh, Coach Tolan for a couple of weeks, uh, myself and my teammate currently now too, Elliot Clements, uh, him and I played together in juniors and now, we're, we were together all four years at Endicott. Um, we were actually talking to them both and we scheduled a visit and we had a tournament in or showcase in uh, what's that 10 rank arena. Um, I forgot the name of it, but um, we had a showcase there and um, Coach Tolan wants to come up a day early to visit the uh, Endicott and then go right to the showcase but our coach at the time he's like you're not missing practice like if you go a day early then don't expect to play at all on the weekend and we're like all right dude I mean we're gonna lose either way we're the worst team in the in the league like whatever but so we ended up uh not going that day and not that morning but we left after practice and there was a snowstorm. So from Rochester to Endicott's probably a five and a half hour drive. It took us 11 hours to get to Endicott, Elliot and I, and it was, I think we were going 10 to 15 miles for three and a half, four hours on the highway going to Endicott. And it was just a crazy trip, but uh, we got out there and just, we stepped foot on campus the next day because we got there early in the morning while it was still dark. But um, we walked around and it was bad weather at the time. But we're right on the water. Coach Tolan was like, you could you could kind of paint a picture of how he looks by just talking to him, and he's just a great down to earth guy that loves hockey and loves chilling with the guys, and that's the coach I want. Just like. I don't know. It's just a guy that trusts you, lets you do your thing. And as long as you're uh, doing, putting the work in, he's going to have your back, you know? Yeah. Those are the best coaches. I've had a lot of coaches, you know, where I've had coaches that are super hard and have no relationship with me. And, you know, I did kind of like that because they were just so hard on me, but then there's been coaches where they're almost too nice and you, you almost don't like it. And then there's coaches right in the middle where you right. have a relationship with them, but they're hard on you. Right. The best. Yeah, he does. Uh, he's got a great resume. So he's got a good uh, track record in his past and uh, definitely uh, is that middle guy. He just knows the game of hockey, knows knows when to coach you, and knows when to just be there and chilling with you as one of the guys. And he finds the happy medium. So he's definitely, definitely a great guy. Seems like a beauty. 
he, he a is beer league beauty <laughs> for sure yeah so so you guys are like right on the water is that um is that like a lake or the ocean it's the ocean yeah it's the ocean we're right on the ocean um we have three beaches on campus um a couple of the dorms are right on the water it's unbelievable um the winters suck though because there's a couple wind tunnels on campus and it's just not good but other than that it's a great spot beautiful campus and I believe the past four years I've been there they've done like four big major con like buildings and changes to campus to make it bigger and better and we're accepting more and more people each year. People are realizing it's a great campus. And I think they just finished a brand new nursing building on the center of campus, which is, I've seen pictures, it's gorgeous. So and the cut's definitely growing and it's I don't I don't see it decreasing in any time. So yeah. Um what about you? Do you guys have like a hockey house or do you guys all live in the dorms? Yeah, so my freshman year, starting freshman year, I think uh, there was just one hockey house. It was just half of a duplex. Then that was the one, that was the only place. And then after freshman year, we ended up getting that whole duplex. So there were eight guys total in there. And then after that, people just found that living off campus was cheaper and better. And I think after this year, I think 95% of the guys live off campus. So it's uh, definitely more of an off-campus. I think it's an off-campus type of school, but mostly everybody lives on campus, but it's better off-campus. Yeah, it's funny to see, like, like you'll see other schools, they have all the hockey guys in the dorms, you know, even, like, the juniors, seniors. You know? Yeah, I don't think they'll do that again for us after my freshman year. I think it was a uh, – it was one of the dorms right in the water – and they put all of us on the bottom of bottom floor of this dorm. So we took up all the bottom rooms of this dorm. It's a small dorm. And then the top floor, just all, all girls. But we, um, we've got, I think we hold the record of most write-ups from incoming freshmen in the mo first month. I think we're at like 105, but uh, we were not. We kind of tore that place apart and ever since then every fr incoming freshman they were like scattered all over campus they didn't want to put them together again so i think we ruined that for, for the team watch out for the hockey guys you know on campus well you, you bring in 16 21 year old freshmen it's gonna you gotta party you know so yeah you, you gotta, gotta understand loud. that loud definitely um I had I had two uh, hockey roommates right next to me, and we were just so way too loud for the other people in the dorm. That's that's on them. Yeah, it's college. You get it exactly. Um. So, wow. So you guys are an absolute powerhouse. Um, you guys, your your freshman year that was a pretty good freshman year. You guys won that championship, correct? Yep, we won the championship our freshman year. I think we beat uh, Wentworth in the conference finals. Um, we were going to the NCAA tournament. We were going to host our very first NCAA tournament game at Endicott. And we were we practiced all week, and then we're on the ice ending practice Friday. And we see our athletic director come out come out on the bench and our coach calls us all over and you took a knee and our um, athletic director is like, yep, uh, we got to cancel the tournament. We're sending you home because of COVID. So COVID kind of screwed us over there. But um, then the next year came around, didn't get, didn't get a season there. We got to play three games though, which uh, was a lot better than some other schools. We actually, we're able to be on the ice practice, but we had to practice in like pods. So it was like 10 people per pod. So we were never on the ice as a full team. Even for those three games we played, our coach was on the ice three separate times, just 
kind of running systems with each pod and stuff like that. So it was definitely very unique. Um, but we played those three games and then <clears throat> nothing ever came out of it. So we lost that year and it, it was just awful. I think it kind of pissed me off a little bit because um, all sports got to play a tad then we got to play maybe three games, but we got pressured hard to follow rules and everything. And then spring comes around and all the spring sports got a season. So it's like, so, I mean, I just felt bad for the seniors that year because they didn't get a senior night, nothing like that. No recognition, no last year to play hockey because it's the last time you're ever going to play. And then spring rolls around and all these sports are having their senior nights and fans coming to games. And it's like, whoa, <laughs> but what are you going to do? Yep. And then, so the next year after that, how'd that year go? Uh, we lost in the conference finals and we didn't get a bid into the national tournament. So we lost to, UNE that year uh, in overtime, we were actually up two to one, I think, with 40 seconds left to go in the third, and they tied it up. And then they uh, scored on the power play in overtime to win it. So that definitely wasn't a, definitely wasn't a good year. And then last year um, was probably the best year we've ever had in Endicott history and won no problem in the conference championship, uh, six nothing to Curry. And then we had the home ice advantage. And then Utica actually um, was a big upset. And it gave us the opportunity to host the uh, Frozen Four. And and it wasn't the outcome we wanted. It would have definitely been awesome to uh, win the Frozen Four at our home rink. But that, was, that would have been too perfect, you know? It was, Hobart's a great team. It was fun playing them in the Frozen Four, and they're an awesome team. They deserve to win that, and uh, hopefully next year it could be us. Yeah, hopefully you guys can come back at them and win it. Um, I I last week I got on uh, Luke. Oh, crap, I forget his last name, but he was on Hobart, and um, he was telling me about the whole thing, how they won it. And you know how we felt, and so that was super cool to hear hear that. But um, I also want to kind of hear it on your side because you guys had you know the home crowd. It looked like it was absolutely packed in there. You know? Yep, I think um, uh, each game we had, um, like during, throughout the tournament, even the championship game against Curry, I think we had twenty five hundred people there, maybe more. I think the capacity is 21 2200 but a lot more people in and there's no seating at all so yeah. it was all so loud crowd was cheering it's definitely great having that fan base on your side because it gives you that extra momentum in those games so it was awesome um i'm just glad we could uh bring so much excitement to the school and it was definitely a moment I'll never forget. Um, it was definitely one of the best crowds I've ever played in front of and the most supportive fan base ever. So it was awesome. Um, so one of your uh, – you had a goal. Um, I put you on right. the front cover. Breaking up a little bit. You there? Connection sucks. You there? You here? You're cutting in and out. You're frozen, but I can hear your voice right now. All right. Uh, well, I, I put you on the cover um, on the Beer League Beauties. Yeah, I saw that. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, now we'll we'll pop it up right here. You got this right here, view. I don't know if you can see it. You can't see it on here. 
but it's right. it's you it's you selling um it looks like there's a huge crowd behind you you know can yeah you... that was uh that was against curry in the championship game this year that yeah. was uh the tell first us how the tell us that? tell us how that goal went how the shift went and uh in your celly <sighs> Well, the shift, uh, I don't remember anything about the shift. I just remember there was a turnover on the on the blue line, stayed, stayed on sides, and I just came in wide with speed, beat the defender, and I came in at an angle on the goalie um, and just went kind of the glitch goal in NHL. I did backhand, forehand, roofed it right over his shoulder, and then – I don't know, just hearing that crowd behind me and that um, that energy, that's that's the celly I came up with. It was just right in the moment. I was just I knew that was a big goal in the game. I I mean Curry. We were definitely I would say that's probably one of our biggest rivals this year was just Curry and I think we were one one and one against them. So it was definitely a big game and that championship game was the highest nationally ranked championship game out of CCC history. So like there was definitely a lot riding on that game, a lot to prove. So scoring that first goal was definitely big and I knew it would bring the energy to the guys. So we just had to keep up with that energy, which we did. So it was definitely a big goal in my opinion. That's sweet. And um, it's awesome that I got you on here now. You know, after getting that cover, <laughs> yeah, my um, my teammate Ryan Gollin sent it to me, and I'm like, what? I'm like, how the hell did he get this picture? All that stuff, but it was, it's awesome. I, I went, I scrolled through all the other pictures; they're great pictures. So it was definitely cool. Yeah, being one of the one of one of the pictures, so it was definitely pretty cool. Yeah, um, I know Ryan Gollin and uh, Tyler. Yeah. Great guys. Uh, how how's he? How's he doing out there at Endicott? He's good. He's got to work on his golf swing a little more, in my opinion. But um, he's doing well. He's a great guy. Tyler, same thing. Got to work on his golf swing, but a uh, great player and just two good guys, and they're fun to mess with. So <laughs> they're awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, I know him from uh, from playing hockey you know, around the seacoast. So, um, is, he, is he a goal scorer? How's he doing uh, with the hockey? Ryan? He's doing great. He's doing great. Um, came in freshman year. He just, ever since he came in freshman year, always was quiet, just kept his head down, worked hard, and just, he was a grinder, and he was just proving his spot, and always doing well and I think this year was probably his best one of his best years he's scored big goals for us and made some big plays and just I don't know it's scored a lot but he also made those plays that were very important just defending somebody or making that extra hard play to get that puck out of the zone which resulted in goals stuff like that so He's a definitely a great two-way player. So, um, so Zach, is there a favorite memory um, at Endicott? It can be anything. Favorite memory? I don't know. Um, definitely. I'm not sure. There's just a lot of great memories that I've made with my teammates and other people. It's hard to say. Definitely. I would, I would probably just say this whole year, this whole senior year. I mean, it's not the result we wanted, but I mean, I, this wasn't the, I wouldn't want the year to end any other way. I mean, we made it to the Frozen Four. We hosted it. We made history at Endicott. We we were the best Endicott hockey team in the history of Endicott. So, like, it's definitely an honor to be a part of that team. 
And one, it's only going to expose our program even more. So we're going to bring in better players. And I'm not going to, I'm not saying better, but like we're going to consistently bring in those good players that we need to make it this far uh, consistently. So it's definitely an honor. And this year was just kind of, I don't know how to describe it, but it was definitely very special. It was definitely a very special year for sure. Yeah, it definitely looked like it. Um, having that home crowd and, you know, just going all the way, going all the way, you know? Yeah, it was just, I mean, the team, like, everyone was very uh, selfless. Like, like all the all the scratches, they didn't show up with the chip on their shoulder because they weren't playing. They, they were, every practice, working their ass off fighting for a spot to play like who doesn't want to play like I'll get that but like that's not only making them better but it's making the people that are playing better too because they're competing against those guys in practice that are getting it there they're all so like we were consistently pushing each other in practices guys were showing up to every single lift working their asses off at every single lift and if there was a guy slacking he wasn't punished. We were just right there helping him get back on his feet and getting on the same page as everybody else. So like it was definitely a very selfless team. Everybody loved each other, trusted each other, and everyone just did their job. And I think that's what was the reason we were so successful. Wait, man. Um, sounds like a lot like my hockey team, you know, Yeah. Uh, at USM. Some uh, similar things, you know, the, the scratches should always be, you know, ready to go um, yeah. cause it's pushing those top players on the top lines helps. Um, yeah. And then at the games in between, in, in between periods during intermission, they were right there cheering us on, pumping us up in the locker room. They weren't just doing their own thing in between periods. They were right in the locker room with us, cheering us on everything like that. So um, it's, it's definitely full circle. Like it's everybody, no matter, no matter what, if you're, if you're consistent, healthy scratch listening to this, like you do have a way bigger impact with that mentality than you think. So like, just be there supporting the guys, do whatever it takes, work your ass off in practice because it's only going to make you and the ones around you better. So Wow. Great advice, man. Um, so for, for gear, uh, what do you guys get? Are you guys a CCM team, a Bauer team? What do you guys get? Uh, we're a Bauer team. Yep. Helmet, gloves, pants, sticks, all Bauer. Yeah. Sweet. And what's that like when you get the gear? Is that like Christmas? (laughs) It is Christmas, but, um, Sometimes it's a, it's a brawl to get everything. Once the sticks come in, everyone's rushing to the stick room and pushing each other to get there first so they could get, make sure they get a stick and stuff like that. But um, it's definitely like Christmas. Uh, it'll be, and it'll be weird too, because we'll be waiting for it. And one guy goes to the rink early to, I don't know, grab something he forgot from the rink, but he sees the delivery truck pull in and he's they're unloading all our gear and he sends in the group chat like oh equipment's here and it's not even the end of the day we're in all we're all just rushing to the rink to grab it but they're yelling at us because they need to put all the equipment in an excel file and get uh inventory counts and everything but we're already taking shit so like we got to return it and we're getting yelled at and but uh we're definitely we definitely get psyched when equipment comes in. And, uh, all right. So we got, we got three minutes left. Um, okay. Do you have uh, any advice for any younger hockey player? Um, uh, I'll say um, kind of going back to that year I took off from juniors, um, a stubborn uh, demanding mentality. It's not going to work. It's, it's only gonna drive your game down even more. Um, I learned that firsthand and 
just keeping your mind open, going out there and playing hockey for the reason why you fell in love with the sport in the first place is why you should be out there and doing it. Just go out there and have fun. You're out there with your, I don't know, 30 closest friends. Go out there, have fun, create memories. And who cares? Like, just go out there and have a who cares attitude. Just go out there, do your thing, have fun. And you're going to play probably the best hockey you'll ever play. So that's, that's what I got. It's all mentality. It's having a good attitude. And it's not only for hockey, it's for life. I mean, yeah, you need to be hard on yourself at some points, especially with school. Like, like school is very important. Academics are important. And you got to be hard on yourself at some point. But just everyday life, just make yourself happy and have fun first. It's mentality is the most important thing. Sweet, man. Thanks for the advice. You heard it here, folks. Beer League Beauties podcast. Zach Mazur. Thank you for having me. All righty. Thank you, man. Um, No problem. Thank you uh, for for a great story. Um, I wish you the best of luck, and um, I'll be rooting for you, man. Sounds good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Tell uh, tell, uh, Ryan I say what's up, and um, good luck next year, man. I will. Thank you. We'll have to do a uh, like a catch up podcast, you know, in a couple of years. And um, sounds good. Wish you the best. Uh, all right, I'll start.